There's one thing, there's one thing that would help 99.9% .9 of men get their balls back and become elite, driven, and generous men. Husbands, fathers, grandfathers, the elite, generous, and driven men that this world needs now more than ever. Michael McLean, BrassBallsVideos.com. I am an ex-professional hockey coach turned uh, eight-figure entrepreneur. You can download a free copy of my brand new book, Five Ways to Unfuck Your Life in the Next 30 Days. It's a free digital download. When you put in your email, I will email you a complimentary copy of the book. Uh, within five minutes, the link is below. Admittedly, my new book is not every entrepreneur's cup of whiskey. I wrote this book for champions, not chumps, for winners, not whiners. So I was uh, at a uh, Canada Day cookout barbecue uh, a couple days ago celebrating uh, Canada Day here north of the border. And it brought to me like, this is everything to me. This one thing is the number one reason that 99.9% .9 of men are not showing up. They're not showing up in 2024 for a lot of reasons, but this is number one on my list. You can talk about character, you can talk about integrity, you can talk about self-discipline, you can talk about mental toughness, and I do talk about those things, and they're all critically important. But until a man, a husband, a father, a grandfather, a small business owner gets this one thing right, there's no chance of them winning in any area of their life. And this is the reason, this one thing is the reason we have so many weak men amongst us in 2024. And there's no excuse for it. There's no excuse for it. And we're awash in it. We're surrounded with it. And the sad part is, over the last 30 years, it's become normal. It's become okay. This one thing has become okay. And it's led to low standards. It's lo led to low self-esteem and self-image with our children. It's led to lousy husbands, lousy marriages, lousy fathers, just lousy leadership across the board. But you can literally fix everything if this one thing is prioritized, if this one thing is prioritized for men. 99% lack it now, and 1% of 1%, the elite, the driven, the generous men that I work with, they all have this one thing. If, no exceptions. My mastermind members, my book readers, my newsletter subscribers, they have strengths, they have weaknesses, they have things they're good at, they have things they don't, they're not good at, but they have this one thing. Winners, champions, builders, rainmakers, great men have this one thing, and it's almost gone in society today. So what the hell is this one thing, Michael? Well, look around, look around. When I was at a Canada Day celebration a couple of days ago, I had the privilege of meeting a, a career police officer. And I'm a big pro-police guy, right? I'm like, defund the bureaucrats, defund the politicians, defund the unions, and let's fund the police. More police on the street, better training, all of it. I am as pro-police, I'm as pro-military, I'm as pro-self-responsibility as you can get. But it absolutely makes me want to fucking vomit when I meet somebody who was hired to wear the uniform, okay, hired to wear the uniform. I mean, uh, being a police officer is a calling. It's a, being a police officer is a calling. It's, it's a purpose-driven -dri thing. You're going to help people your whole career. I mean, police officers, the good ones, are men and women on missions. It's, it's like being a Navy SEAL. It's like being a really good teacher. It's like being a really good coach. It's like, really, like being a real entrepreneur. 
uh, if a, a really good police officer, it's not what you do, it's who you are. I'm going to say that again. If you're if you're a man on a mission and you're a police officer or you're a soldier or you're a SEAL or you're a father or you're a husband or you're a small business owner, it's not what you do. It's it's who you are. When I when I ran my own hockey team, it wasn't something I did. That that hockey team was part of my identity. When I was the number one insurance agent in the entire country, insurance wasn't what I did. It was who I am. The same thing with this consulting business here. I'm not out here shooting these broken iPhone videos every morning because it's something I do. I don't need to do any of this stuff. I've been in a safe harbor financial position for seven years now. But this is who I am. This is my purpose. This is my calling. This is my mission. And a great police officer or a great leader or a great military person or a great farmer or a great firefighter or a great first responder or a great teacher or a great mentor or a great husband or a great father. Men on missions, men and women on missions. So I meet this guy and I have to say, admittedly, I was so disappointed when I found out that he was a police officer because I hold those guys right up here, right? I hold those guys right up here. You put your life on the line every day. You go to work and you never, ever, ever know if you're coming back. Oh, well, Michael, it's, it's that fucking dangerous. And you have people against you. You have the government against you. You have the bureaucrats against you. You have a large part of society against you. I tip my hat to those guys and gals because, you know, on the freeway and the highways and working in the middle of the night, they never know who they're pulling over. They never know what car they're pulling over. They never know what door they're knocking on. And it can be over in an instant. So highest, highest respect for our men and women in uniform, including police officers. But I meet this guy here and he lacks the one thing that all elite men lack, and that's personal pride. Personal pride. I meet this guy, there's no way, there's no way you could have ever told me that he was a police officer when I met him. And the reason I say that is he was in such poor physical condition. In other words, he was so fat, he was so overweight, he was so disheveled, he was so uh, unput together, so clearly showing a guy like me, I mean, I read people in seven seconds, no self-respect whatsoever, no respect, of course, for his health or his appearance. And I'm just sitting there and I'm watching this guy, you know, drink beer. I'm, wa I'm watching him fill his face with, with food at the barbecue. And then I said to my wife, Krista, uh, I, I, a little bit later, because I didn't know him, I said, what does this guy do? What does he do? And she just about, it's like a two by four upside my head. She goes, oh, he's a, he's a police officer. And I said, a police officer, a police officer, what? And she goes, well, I think he has a desk job. And I said, no fucking shit, he's got a desk job. That guy is 300 pounds and he's about a hundred pounds overweight. So where's the personal pride? Where's the personal pride? And, and I'm not gonna rant this morning about what the police association and the unions, because I'm so sick and tired of unions, where, well, teachers, we don't have to do it because of the union. The police, the, oh, we don't have to do it because, the only people that think and talk like that are people that don't give a shit about their job. So I'm not gonna talk about, I'm not gonna rant about what the police union should do. They should have standards for these guys. They should have standards for these gals where this is the way you dress, this is the length of your hair, this is facial hair. But most importantly, you got to be capable to do the job. Now, maybe this guy is Mr. Martial Arts or whatever, but I'm just looking at this guy and I'm like, it's a good thing you're behind a desk. But I'm also looking at this guy and saying, like Jimmy Johnson and what the great Nick Saban used to tell his players at Alabama, what are you selling? I, all day, every day as men, we're selling something. Like, what are we selling? Subconsciously, we're selling something. What are we selling? So in this case, you're selling that you don't respect yourself. You're selling that you don't take your job seriously. And you're selling that you have 
low self-image, lack of discipline, and you have no personal pride. Because I'm just sitting there and I'm just going, okay, if this is a guy who knocks on my door, or if this is a guy that pulls over uh, my vehicle, if this is, is this the guy I want coming in an emergency situation, a 911 situation? Is this the guy I want coming to help my family? And I'm just like, where's the personal pride? And I don't care because these guys don't have to do anything right now, right? They can dress any way they want. They can have hair down to their ass. They can talk on their cell phones all day. They can be 300 pounds. They can, whatever it is. And of course, the unions are not gonna touch any of this stuff, right? But I'm talking to you today about personal pride. I don't give a shit what a union says or an association says or, or what the standards are for a particular thing. I'm saying, where's the personal pride? I'm out here walking every day shooting these videos because I have my own personal pride. I mean, I cannot not do these because I won't break my word to myself. I won't lie to myself. But where is this personal pride with the rest of these 99.9% .9 of men who are supposed to be in leadership positions? Like, I mean, I can talk about this across the board, but really who I like to shine the light on is people that get paid for leadership positions. A police officer job is a leadership position. You imagine a, a Navy SEAL showing up like that? I mean, oh, look at me, I got a job and then I ate my way through the next 30 years. I mean, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta not give a shit about yourself. You gotta not give a shit about your body and you gotta not give a shit about your career to end up like that. And it's not the first guy that I met like that. No wonder he's on a desk. They have nothing else to do with him. He can't fucking defend anybody. He can't protect anybody. And it's absolutely bullshit. And a guy like that should know better. He should look in the mirror. He should take some personal pride. And if that doesn't work, what the, what the association should do is fire his fucking ass. You get rid of a few guys like that in the first uh, couple years of their career. And that stuff just goes right through the police association. Same thing with the school teachers. I was uh, at a graduation a couple weeks ago. Lord left and fuck. I mean, I'm sitting there and you got this class of terrific kids, ages kindergarten to grade six, and they're graduating, right? And I mean, the parents walk in, the parents walk in, not all of them, but 99% of them walk in. And it's like, literally, they're coming from a fucking work site. This is the end of the week. This is the end of the day. There's no excuses. And here's the thing, half these parents are wearing pajamas, half of them, you know, they're on their cell phones during the ceremony, ball caps on backwards, t-shirts, you know, shorts, and most of these people, fat fucks. And I'm just sitting there going, and I'm like, what an example to set for your children. So that's just the parents going to the, to the event. I mean, we used to dress, I'm the only guy dressed up at the graduation. Like I'm literally, I'm like, I, I'm, an, I'm a badass. I do the opposite. There's no damn way I'm showing up to something like that and not having the personal pride to show up the right way. I want my kid and I want the teachers to see somebody who's taking personal pride in their appearance. Personal pride. I don't have to be a, the best looking guy on earth and I don't have to be a professional bodybuilder, but Jesus Christ, show up, I mean, in something more than track pants and, and a ball cop on backwards. It's just pathetic, and it's the worst example you can give as a leader, as a parent. It's no wonder the kids are showing up in pajamas, and they're showing up late, and they're showing up tired, and they're showing up sick, and, and they don't know, they don't know, there's no leadership, because there's no what? Personal pride. And then it gets even better. I continue to watch this graduation, sitting a bunch of, a bunch of uh, fucking slobs, and then, oh boy, look at this. So out of the four teachers, out of the four teachers, you've got two that are, are obese. And I mean obese. They're so overweight, they can barely walk. They can't walk normally. Okay, these are leaders. They signed up to teach young children. It wasn't like they were called, to, like called in to do this and they were surprised. They let themselves get like this knowing that they're in a leadership position, that more is caught and taught. Uh, I remember my great teachers and my parents and everybody else, 
what they did is all that mattered. I never listened to anybody. I never, I'm like you, I didn't listen to what people preached in every sermon. I just watched what people did. Some people, their life is a warning and some people, their life is an example. But I'm telling you, like three of these four teachers, it's an exact example of what not to do. How can you have any personal pride and you show up like that every day to teach young people? And of course, they're from the, the new, they made excuses for themselves, right? Well, you can't, you can't tell me what to do. And the union says, I'm a, I'm a, I, I, this is not, this is not my fault and all this other horseshit. This is where, when we stop shaming people, when we stop shaming people because of all the cupcakes and the snowflakes and the poodles, we stop shaming people in education, in policing. We stop shaming people now in the military. The generals, they don't know what to fucking do with these people. But that's the thing. Now that now that the mush cookies have got control of these organizations, all of the pride is gone. All of the discipline is gone. All of the standards are gone because we can't fucking shame anybody. When I ran my championship hockey club, a hockey club, you better fucking believe it. All I did was shame those young men. And I have those guys coming back now. They're 24, 25 years old. And they're just, and they're successful in life. They're young men, they're, they're married, they have professional careers, they're tradesmen. And to a man, those guys come back and they say, you know what, coach, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that you didn't patronize me. I'm so grateful that you kicked my ass for four years because the, it's, it's, the biggest, it's the biggest reason that I'm dominating in life right now. What do I say every day? You can be a part-time badass in 2024 and run over people. That's because people are not prepared to compete at any level. You're 100 pounds overweight or you're intoxicated or you're sedated or you can't show up on time or you're, you're an iPhone junkie. Like, are you kidding me? Like, there's never been a better time to kick ass and take names. If you can't kick ass and take names now, as a part-time bad, hell, I could be a weekend, I could be a weekend badass and I'd be number one in everything that I'm in. I could be a weekend badass and I would be number one in any area of my life. Like, are you kidding me? If you can't kick ass and take names, if you can't be the number one detective or the number one um, police officer or the number one teacher or the number one coach or the number one pharmacist or the number one whatever it is, it's because you don't have any personal pride, but it's all around us. I mean, the kids coming to school with the, 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 the flip flops and the Crocs and the pajamas, that's all just lousy parenting. That's all parental malpractice. That's union malpractice with the police and the teachers. And you see it in sports now. Are you kidding me? These, these guys that are making 10 sheets and 12 sheets and in the NFL, 30 sheets and $40 million a year, and they don't have to, they dress like fucking bums. And these young people see it, right? They live this. So, you know, it used to be in the NHL, you'd have the, all the players come in and they'd show it on TV. You got the, the Wayne Gretzky's and the Sidney Crosby's and the Mark Messier's and they're just all dressed in these beautiful suits and ties. Professionalism, professionalism. They look like champions, so they play like champions. And I remember with all my teams, my guys all, we had a dress code and we walk into that building and we're giving off an energy that says, we've already won this game. We're gonna wipe the fucking floor with you guys. I used to be able to predict as a coach and junior, I'd be like, we walk in and then I'd walk, watch the other team walk in, hats on backwards and sweatshirts and hoodies. And I'm like, this is gonna be over early. This is gonna be over early. My guys are gonna run over these motherfuckers. And they would, just by, just by prep alone. But personal pride, like when I bought my, my local Perth Blue Wings team here and the team was in the outhouse and I built them up to a championship penthouse organization, what was the one thing I did? I returned personal pride. And I did this a decade ago. They didn't know how to be on time. They didn't know how to dress. They didn't know how to speak. They didn't know how to treat people. They didn't know how to work. They didn't know how to do any of it. And as a leader, I didn't make excuses. Oh, that's the way players are today. Or that's what the union says, or I don't have to do anything, or I don't have to make my kid wear real clothes. 
Instead, I took personal responsibility and I was accountable because I had personal pride. I live in this community. I wanted my team, people to see my players and go, wow, what fine young men, what fine young athletes. And that was the response that I got because it all went back to that personal pride. It went back to personal pride. We were the fittest. We were the most mentally tough. We were the most mannered. We had the most etiquette. We, we dressed the best. We, all of this stuff. And it just adds up to an absolute unfair advantage. If you're not kicking ass and taking names, I have no sympathy for you. Because in 2024, we live in the wealthiest time in history. You're awash in abundance and opportunity. You're awash in, in uh, um, advantages like technology and AI like never before. If you can't win now, it's because you got no fucking pride. That's the only solution. That's the only answer for a person who's not the best at what they do. It's never, like Joe Rogan said, it's never been easier to be great at what you do. I hate that word easier, but I'm gonna say it. It's never been easier. It's never been easier to be an elite man. It's never been easier to be an elite husband, an elite father, an elite entrepreneur. If you say you have competition in any of those areas of your life, you're just lying to yourself. You're just lying to the man in the mirror because there is no competition. You just show up and do a few things every day and take personal pride and show up on time and look people in the eye and have, have some discipline in your life. You're going to run over people. You're going to run over people. That's the message I give my 11 year old daughter when she says, you know, something's hard or difficult. I fucking laugh in her face. I'm like hard and difficult. Your grandparents were born in the depression. Your grandparents were born in the depression. You don't know what fucking hard is. You don't know what difficult is. And don't tell me you have any peers or any competition because you fucking well don't. And that's it. I'm teaching her and my wife is te we're teaching her to have personal fucking pride. When she loses at something, especially if it's small and she didn't put in the work, I want her sick to her stomach. And to her credit, she is sick to her stomach. Now, if you put in the work and you did everything you could and you still didn't win, that's different. That's a learning situation. You're still sick to your stomach. You're still miserable about it, but there's winning and there's learning. But when you just simply don't give a shit, you don't care. I mean, then you should be sick to your stomach and you better get used to losing because you're going to have a lifetime of it. But man, oh man, we need standards. We need, we need expectations, especially with people in leadership roles. I mean, it's one thing to look around and say, well, you know, people, they dress like bums now. You can't tell this person, this person's got, you know, the dad bod, they're 75 pounds overweight, they drink too much. That's one thing. But these people that actually take a paycheck from us, us, the government, and they're in a leadership role, I remember when I was a kid and the police officers would come to the school to talk about the do not do drugs program. Remember the Nancy Reagan kind of stuff? And I was just, it was like, it was like the God, these guys were like superheroes. They walked in with the pressed navy blue suits and the black boots and the shine on the boots, like literally the same as a Navy SEAL. And they had the trimmed haircuts and they'd have the sunglasses on and they'd either have a helmet or a ball cap. But literally, literally these guys were like superheroes walking in and they're fit and they're strong and they used to have to be over six feet tall in some cases. But these were the guys you want showing up at your house on a 911 call. These are the guys we want protecting our children. And now, even in a place like Naples, I mean, I come up beside the police officers in Dunkin' Donuts, and I can barely tell that they're cops. I'm like, you look like you work on an African safari. They got the they got the um, the, 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 the 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 uh, pants and the jacket uh, in the camouflage and the ball caps on, and I'm like, holy shit! Are you sure you're an authority figure? Are you sure you're an authority figure? There's no no crispness, no professionalism. And there's no, look, I'm in charge. And then they wonder, teachers and, 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 and police officers and all these people that are unfit and, and unprofessional, then they're the, they're the people that talk about, well, there's no respect. There's no respect. There's no respect because you're not demanding respect by your pride and you're not commanding respect by your lack of pride. 
I mean, you get yourself in, in the best physical shape of your life and you show up every day and you take your career seriously and you're always becoming a better leader, all the rest of that stuff will take care of itself. But man, oh man, if you're struggling in your life, start taking things personally. Start personally shaming yourself. When I, when I, was, when I was not in, the, in good enough shape to be a father in the last year, I fucking well shamed myself. I said to myself, you know, I said, this is not acceptable. Having a dad body and being 20 pounds overweight and drinking alcohol and eating the wrong foods, it wasn't okay. It wasn't okay. And I told myself that. My wife told me that. She shamed me. And that's how people change. That's how smokers quit smoking. That's how gamblers stop gambling. That's how people that are alcoholics stop drinking. That's how people lose 50 pounds. They don't lose by Tony Robbins motivation. You can do it. Oh, I believe in you. That stuff's important. But really, people do stuff because of massive pain. There's two motivators in life, right? There's pleasure and there's pain. Pleasure is what pulls you to it. Oh, I want to look good and I want to impress people. And that's, that's part of motivation. But the greatest motivating power in this world for a man is pain. I'm fucking sick and tired of looking like this. I'm sick and tired of, of, of feeling like this when I wake up. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Every change I've made in my life for the better Every change I've made in my life for the better was based in personal pride. It was si as simple as this, losing weight, drinking, stopping drinking, working, get, you know, getting rid of my cell phone. It was all based in one thing. I'm fucking well sick and tired of being sick and tired. That's how I changed my nutrition. That's how I lost 15 pounds. That's how I got in the best shape of my life. That's how I became wealthy. That's how I turned the insurance business around. That's how I saved my marriage. That's how I became a better father. Sick and tired of being sick and tired. And in any area of your life, if you're sick and tired, if you feel you've hit a plateau, or you feel you're in a slump or a funk, or you just can't get to the next level, it's time to shine the light on yourself and take some personal pride and say to yourself, am I ready? Am I sick and tired of being sick and tired? And you won't change and you won't transform until you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. And how do you become sick and tired? You look in that mirror every day and take some fucking personal pride. Hey, take some personal pride in the reflection. How do you look? How does your face look? What about your haircut? What about the clothes you wear? How do you dress? How do you shake hands? Do you, uh, like, are you, a, are you an iPhone junkie? Are you, are you into pornography? Are you into, are you into um, uh, smoking pot all the time? Are you doing all these things that are killing your manhood? Because if the king doesn't rise, the kingdom dies. And um, the biggest reason we don't have enough kings is we don't have enough personal pride. I could tell you a bazillion stories like this from the hockey world, from the business world, police stories, whatever. But you know what happens is you just have to make sure that you're showing personal pride in all areas of your life. That it's not okay to be unfit. It's not okay to not be presenting yourself as a pro. It's not okay to dress like a bum. It's not okay you know, to, to be a cell phone junkie. It's not okay to be, to be these things. And start taking personal pride in everything you do. All the, great, all the great athletes and all the great entrepreneurs that we remember their names long after they're dead, they just had this incredible personal pride. At the end of the day, they were workaholics and they had discipline and they were men on mission, women on a mission. But at the end of the day, they just had this unrelenting personal pride. They were sick to their stomach when they didn't show up as they should. And that's what we need to bring back into the Western world. Some personal pride, especially in leadership roles. If I'm a teacher, or if I'm a coach, like I, I'm sitting there going, you know, seven months ago, I'm like, how the fuck can I talk to these men about health and nutrition and fitness when I'm not in the best shape of my life? So I was sick to my stomach, I was incongruent, and I said, you know what? I'm not gonna talk about health and fitness and nutrition until I take more personal pride in myself and get myself in the best shape of my life. And right now, I would say I'm in the best 
physical and mental condition of my life since I was in my 20s. And I have a long way to go. I got at least two more years to get in the very best. But it all started with personal pride. I looked in the mirror and I'm like, I'm not happy with how I look. I'm not happy at this weight. I'm not happy how my face looks. I'm not happy how I'm sleeping. I'm not happy that I'm snoring at night. I'm not happy that I feel tired in the afternoons. And all of this stuff, when you get sick and tired of being sick and tired, you can transform your life. And you can literally shame yourself. Shaming yourself is taking personal pride. But forget about anybody else shaming anymore. Are you kidding me? Nobody, that's not gonna happen. But in your life, it has to. And it can come from your circle of real allies. See, I don't have any friends because I don't want any friends. I want fucking foxhole allies. I have five guys in my life who are foxhole allies. And if they saw me slipping in any area of my life, like if they saw me take a drink, or if they saw me, you know, put on five pounds, or if they heard me talking about myself in a negative tone, or if they saw me missing a date night, or whatever it is, if they saw slippage, I have five foxhole guys in my life who would instantly say, you know what, coach? This is not okay. This is not okay. You're a king, not a fucking chump. And that's the shaming I, I have purposely in my life. My, when I, when I have a whining and complaining rule in my, life, in my family, are you kidding me? My 11 year old and my wife, anytime, and it happens about once a month, I'll be standing in the kitchen and I'll be whining and I'll be complaining and I'll be making excuses. I'll be being a little bitch, uh, whining about something ridiculous. And my wife, especially my daughter, will turn to me and say, wah, wah, wah. And literally, I fucking well deserve it. And it literally snaps me out of myself, of my victim mentality, and I get back to it for the next month. But I need the shaming in my life. I need people that remind me it's about personal pride. My dad wore a suit, wore a suit in the insurance business and tie, and tie, casual Fridays, my fucking ass. He wore a suit and tie for 45 consecutive years. Never once did I see my dad in a sweater. Never once did I see him in the insurance business without a tie. Never once did I even see him with one of those blazers. Suit and tie, suit and tie five days a week, 52 years, 52 weeks a year for 45 years. And guess what I wore for the 17 years that I was in that industry? Suit and tie for 17 consecutive years. Not a casual day, not a, a open neck day, not a wear your pajamas to work day, not a casual Friday. No, just fucking winning. My sport is winning. And you got, if your sport is winning, then you better start taking more personal pride. And look around at everything you see and do the exact opposite. Earl, Uncle Earl Nightingale said that, what, 40 years ago? 40 years ago, he said, he goes, winning is easy. He said, winning is easy. Just look around at what the majority is doing, all the people around you, all the people around me, and just do the opposite. And Uncle Earl, Earl said, he was the godfather of personal development. He said, you'll never make another mistake in your life. Just think about that. That was 40 years ago. Uncle Earl said, if you're ever in doubt of what to do when it comes to eating, when it comes to health, when it comes to marketing, when it comes to making money, being a father, being a husband, just look around at the quiet desperation 99%, see what they're doing, what are they doing, what are they doing, and just do the exact opposite, the polar opposite. And then at the best part of that line, he goes, you'll never make another mistake in your life. That was 40 years ago, four decades ago. He would, he would fall over, He's, he'd be turning in his grave now. Are you kidding me? It's so easy to be great. It's so easy to be outstanding. It's so easy to kick ass and take names in today's world, but only, only if you have personal pride in your performance. Personal pride in your performance and having people in your world starting with yourself and then some key people, some foxhole people, when you slip, they say, hey, hey, that's not okay. That's not okay. I just handed you the one thing. This On this July 4th week, I just handed you the one thing that could bring any man back 
from being deballed or whatever, lacking, you know, a loser or or out of it or lost. I just gave, I just gave Western men who have been, who are deballed, I just gave them the one thing that'll bring them back to being elite, driven and generous men. And man, we need more of those guys. Personal pride, personal pride. So on that topic, I'm starting a brand new mastermind in August. If you want to get into an environment where somebody holds your feet to the fire, maybe you're just upset that the first six of the months of the year didn't go your way. Maybe you need to start taking some more personal pride. Well, if you want to be held accountable and you want somebody that's going to say to you, okay, that's not okay. That, that area of your life needs to improve and, and that's not okay. Then I'm inviting 50 men, 50 men to join my program, 50 and over. My guys are 50 plus, 50, 60, 70 years of age. I'm inviting 50 men to join my Badass Brotherhood Mastermind. I'm going to have three live events a year. Uh, it's monthly. You don't have to put out 30 grand or 50 grand. It's 997, 997 bucks a month. If you have any interest in learning more, I'm not going to bore you with the details here, then in the comment below, in the comment below, write shaming. Write shaming in the comment below. Shaming in the comment below, and I'll send you some more details next week when I have some more details. There's zero obligation. I don't give a shit whether you join or you don't. I'm inviting 50 men over the age of 50 to be part of my badass brotherhood. It's money, it's marketing, it's fitness, it's the whole shebang, and it's $9.97 a month. If you're interested in learning more about it, put shaming in the comment below. I just want to say something about paying the tax, okay? It takes me about three hours to do these videos. Not me, like it takes me 40 minutes to shoot it, let's say 15 minutes to prep, so an hour. But my business partner spends like an hour to two hours on these. And I don't fucking sell anything. If you want to join my mastermind, join my mastermind. But these are free content. So if you find value and you want to say thank you and you want to pay it forward, all you got to do is comment, like, and share. Who in your life needs to hear these unpopular opinions? Who in your life needs to hear these old school, old fashioned messages? And make sure that those people subscribe, make sure you send it to them. I'm here to help a million men, but I can't help a million men unless you pay it forward, unless you pay, I don't care. I don't care if you ever spend a dollar with me. I do not care, it will not, it cannot change my life. But if you do actually find value in a video, like it, comment, subscribe, and pay it forward. You may help somebody else whether it's an employee, whether it's a manager, whether it's your queen, whether it's an adult child, pay the tax forward. And I'll keep walking in the rain and walking in the bugs and walking in the heat. I'll do the work every day if you'll help pay it forward and help other people. And you can also download my free book below. The link is there as well. That's it. Two words. Whoa. I am on fire today because that set me off yesterday. When I saw that lack of personal pride, and oh, set me off. That's, that's just, the more we accept it, the more we'll get. The more we accept it, whatever you tolerate in your life, whatever you tolerate in your life, you'll get more of that. And that's what we're tolerating in our world now. We're tolerating a complete lack of personal pride. And what are we getting more? We're getting more lack of personal pride. Like Uncle Earl Nightingale said, do the opposite and start doing the opposite today. Two words that changed my life, two words that can change yours. Be relentless.